The 1920s was no stranger to strange fads and crazes, sometimes going into absurd territory. And especially in retrospective, many of their social ills and likes and dislikes from then are just plain funny in their absurdity. What I'm going to talk about in this video is one of those things. Around the turn of the century, many men wore straw hats instead of other styles like bowlers and newsboy hats. Not the Tom Sawyer kind of straw hat, but this kind. This style of hat was often called a boater or a Panama hat. It was comfortable to wear in the summer when engaging in leisure activities. It gradually became socially unacceptable for men to wear straw hats after the end of summer. It was considered lame and scandalously unfashionable. And there existed an unofficial social rule that men shouldn't wear straw hats after September 15th. This date seems to have just been chosen arbitrarily, but nonetheless, it was generally accepted. This social rule concerning straw hats was especially common in cities, and New York took it very seriously. But many men rebelled against this social norm, or at least paid no attention to it. However, others in the community, mostly teenage boys, took to swiping these hats off of unsuspecting men in the streets after the end of summer, which in this case was September 15th. This wasn't to steal them or anything, it was really just to cause trouble. Sometimes they would even stomp on the hat when it fell to the ground, just for good measure. One day, straw hat wearing men had had enough. Roving gangs of boys had been harassing them especially badly all around New York City in the days leading up to September 15, 1922. The first incidents began two days before the date. On the 13th, a group of these hat hunting hoodlums messed with the wrong guys. They picked a fight with dock workers, armed with sticks fashioned with hooks or nails on the end, perfect for hat snatching. But the dock workers fought back, drawing the fight into the streets. But the onslaught of hats continued. The worst of it came on the night of the 15th. In some cases, men were surrounded by boys who summarily destroyed their headwear in front of them. By some reports, there was a group of a thousand boys engaging in this reckless practice during the night. The police were called in to assist. Hat store owners stayed open later than usual to cater to the men whose hats had been destroyed by selling them soft hats, which were perfectly acceptable for the season. Policemen were not excluded from the destruction. At least three officers had their hats snatched and crushed. Before, they hadn't been too concerned with the boys' activities, but when their hats were added to the list of victims, the heat was on. Here's an excerpt from a newspaper article printed the following day. Patrolman King and Lamore came in hatless and indignant with seven boys, all less than 15 years old, who, they said, were members of a gang that had knocked off their hats and trampled them. Lieutenant Lenahan invited the boys' fathers to come to the station and spank them, and the invitation was cordially accepted. In other police stations, it wasn't an invitation. Some parents were ordered by the officer in charge to spank their sons as official punishment. Some streets were reportedly littered with the lifeless corpses of straw hats. In total, the riot had lasted about eight days, but the horror had finally stopped. The unfashionable men had won and continued to wear whatever they pleased on their heads as long as they could handle the social disapproval. And these men had another unexpected victory the following year. When Calvin Coolidge became president after the death of Warren G. Harding, he proudly wore his straw hat outside of the summer months in public. And that was the story of the Straw Hat Riot of 1922. Let this story be an inspiration to any man whose out-of-season fashion gives him ridicule. It's one small step from ridicule to indiscriminate hat smashing. Instead, we should learn from those brave men, and let us never let this happen again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about this horrific incident. I only recently learned about this, and I knew I had to make a short video about it. If you know of any other strange stories like this from the 1920s, please let me know in the comments, and I might make a video about it sometime. Well, that's all for now, all you chicks and gals out there, but stay tuned for more tales from the Jazz Age.